no one has ever seen inside an atom. However, we think of it as a system of electrons circulating around a heavy nucleus at almost inconceivable speeds. Just a few months after Thomson proposed his plum pudding model, a Japanese physicist called Hantaro Nagaoka published a different proposition for the structure of the atom, which had most of the mass of the atom located in a very small, positively charged point, which was orbited by rings of negatively charged electrons. This became known as the Saturnian model, as it somewhat resembled the rings of Saturn. However, unlike Saturn, Nagaoka's model had a much smaller central point, and he described the rings of electrons by saying that they may or may not lie in the same plane. Sadly, Nagaoka's work has largely been forgotten by history, but this was a remarkable improvement upon Thomson's model, even though there were problems associated with the idea of having mutually repelling particles organized into two-dimensional rings, which even Nagaoka himself acknowledged. Now, like Nagaoka, Thomson was a great scientist, but he was also a great teacher. One of his students, Ernest Rutherford, a New Zealander, was also awarded a Nobel Prize in 1908 for his investigations into radioactive substances like uranium, where he found that they emit different types of radiation, which he named alpha, beta, and gamma. He eventually determined that the alpha particles were just positively charged helium ions, but it was difficult to explain where they had come from. It was also soon found that the beta particles were electrons that had been emitted from the atoms. Over the next couple of years, Rutherford and his colleagues Hans Geiger and Ernest Marston did experiments into the structure of the atom. In 1911, Rutherford published work where he outlined his findings. Here's how his most famous experiment was set up. A very thin sheet of gold foil was placed in the center of a circular screen. A source of alpha particles was aimed at the gold foil. The circular screen was fluorescent, so if an alpha particle hit it, it would light up where it was hit. Now, by this point, it was known that alpha particles had a relatively strong positive charge, so it was expected that they would just blast through the gold foil pretty much undisturbed because the spread out positive charge of the plum pudding model wasn't concentrated enough to stop the alpha particles. But what they actually observed was quite different. Several of the alpha particles were deflected by a few degrees a smaller percentage were deflected by a larger angle, and a very small percentage were deflected at much larger angles. When describing this discovery in a later lecture, Rutherford said, it was quite the most incredible event that has ever happened to me in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you fired a 15 inch shell at a piece of tissue paper and it came back to hit you. Rutherford was saying that since most of the alpha particles weren't deflected, but a small percentage were deflected significantly, this indicated that most of the atom is empty space, and the majority of the mass of the atom must be concentrated in a very small region in the center. That way, most of the alpha particles would fly straight through the empty space, but the few that got close to this massive central region would be deflected. So Rutherford was able to confirm the existence of a tiny, positively charged particle of mass in the center of the atom, just like Nagaoka had predicted. With the discovery of the nucleus, the field of nuclear physics was born.